Hello, and welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving into a crucial topic, understanding hypotension after intubation, including the pathophysiology and changes that occur in our bodies and how to deal with them. Whether you're a medical professional, a student, or simply curious, join us on this informative journey. Endotracheal intubation, one of the most critical and crucial procedures that saves lives, often leads to certain consequences, like severe hypotension followed by intubation, and most of us keep babbling why this might have happened. During intubation, the patient is sedated to induce unconsciousness and administered a muscle relaxant to facilitate tube insertion. The endotracheal tube is then carefully placed into the trachea to secure the airway, followed by confirmation of correct placement using various methods before securing the tube in place. Whether it is a rapid sequence intubation or elective intubation, while intubation is performed with precision, it can trigger a cascade of physiological responses in the body, potentially leading to hypotension. Let's examine the pathophysiology and changes associated with hypotension after intubation. First, hypovolemic shock. You might say, why would there be hypovolemia after intubation? Well, here is the answer. Intubation can lead to changes in intrathoracic pressure, which may affect venous return to the heart and cardiac output. This effect can be particularly significant in patients who are already hypovolemic due to conditions such as dehydration, hemorrhage, or fluid losses from other causes like septicemia. Next, vasodilation due to medical induction. Certain medications used during intubation, such as induction agents that is propofol, etomidate, and muscle relaxants like succinylcholine or rocuronium, can lead to vasodilation, resulting in a decrease in systemic vascular resistance and blood pressure. In cases of rapid sequence intubation, administration of sedatives like midazolam after paralytic agents can lead to hypotension. Next, cardiac depression. Intubation-induced stress and the administration of anesthetics can depress myocardial function, reducing cardiac output and contributing to hypotension. Next, we have adrenal insufficiency. Patients with adrenal insufficiency may not have an adequate cortisol response to stress, including the stress of intubation, leading to hypotension. Last but not least, neurogenic shock. In rare cases, a traumatic or neurologic injury can result in neurogenic shock, characterized by widespread vasodilation and hypotension. Dealing with hypotension after intubation requires a systematic approach. Let's break it down into actionable steps. Here's our step-by-step -step guide to treating hypotension after intubation. Step 1. Evaluation and monitoring. Immediately assess patient vital signs such as blood pressure, heart rate, and perfusion. Continuous monitoring is important throughout the treatment process. Step 2. Fluid resuscitation. Intravenous fluid administration is initiated to expand intravascular volume and improve preload. Use crystalloids such as normal saline or equilibrium solution. Next, vasopressor support. If hypotension persists despite fluid resuscitation, start vasopressors to increase systemic vascular resistance. Choose from active agents such as norepinephrine, phenylephrine, dopamine, and vasopressin. Next, inotropic support. If myocardial dysfunction is suspected or confirmed, consider adding an inotrope such as dobutamine or milrinone. Next, we have steroids. Patients with adrenal insufficiency are given steroids, such as hydrocortisone, to improve vascular tone and response to stress. Identify and treat the underlying factors causing low blood pressure, such as bleeding, sepsis, or cardiac dysfunction. Next, optimization of mechanical ventilation. Ensure ventilator settings are appropriate to optimize oxygen delivery and ventilation. Avoid high levels of positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, and tidal volumes, which can worsen hypotension. Continually monitor patient responses to treatment and adjust interventions as necessary. Check your vital signs, fluid balance, and blood flow regularly. Monitor and manage potential complications related to treatment procedures, such as arrhythmias, fluid overload, and tissue ischemia. And there you have it. Causes, pathophysiology, and treatment of hypotension following intubation. Remember, the time frame between induction and the onset of hypotension could be really short, so act quickly and precisely to avoid any mishaps. Don't forget to like and follow us for more ICU-related stuff. Until next time, stay curious and keep learning.